A few years back, I bought raw land in upstate New York. My goal and dream was to build a cabin and one day start a glamping business. I was able to do all of that. The problem that no one ever talks about and we all kind of move on too fast from is the fact that city people like myself that live in really small apartments and don't ever take care of any grass, well, we don't know how to own, we don't know how to nurture, we don't know how to take care, and we don't know how to build up raw land. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you everything that I wish I knew right after I bought my land. And before I jump into it, the first tip I'm gonna give you is go to Home Depot, buy those signs that say, stay off of private property, put them all up all around your land, especially if you own a couple of acres. Now, after I gave you that piece of advice, let's jump in, because that one is just too important. Now, the first thing I wanna tell you is, Owning acres of raw land is absolutely nothing like owning and taking care of a yard. Let's say that you're from the suburbs and you've taken care of your backyard or your lawn or whatever. I promise you the amount of physical labor it takes to own raw land and to take care of raw land is nothing like going outside of your air conditioned house after you just had some sweet tea or whatever people in the suburbs drink and go outside and taking care of that. It is different. It is back breaking work because after you buy raw land, you're kind of not taking care of something. You're actually like reestablishing it. Most likely the land that you get will be some type of like foresty type of thing. Or if it is just grass, the grass is going to be overgrown. There's going to be a lot of the natural flowers kind of taking over and the invasive plant species running wild. So when you buy raw land, you're kind of coming in and having to tame that land. So if you think that you by yourself are going to be able to take care of three to five acres, guess again, you're going to need some friends or you're going to need a lot of time because again, it is really tough work. The second thing that I wish all city folk know before they buy land is the fact that it is much more financially expensive as well. If you pay somebody $40 to cut your yard, maybe the local kid down the block, it is much different than that. You're going to be paying a lot more because you're going to need a specialist to come in. Some of the reasons that it's much harder physically and also financially is raw land isn't normally unnaturally level. A lot of the land that you guys are seeing in your suburban areas of the city areas, it didn't come that level. It didn't come that flat. And also those things get taken care of by other companies. You are solely going to be the one in charge of taking care of your raw land. So you either have to figure out one of those two ways of doing it. If not, and I understand why people are like, what's the big deal? I just won't do it. Well, you're going to have a lot of snakes and other animals taking care of your raw land for you. So when you do go up, to, I don't know, build a cabin, go hunting, go fishing, whatever you plan on doing with your raw land. When you do go up to do that, you're going to have to deal with everybody else that has taken care of your land for you. Which leads me on to my next bit of advice. If it's not animals that are going to be taking care of the land for you, it's going to be the local teenagers or riffraff. You need to make sure people know your land is not just the abandoned forest anymore. It is owned and operated by someone who not only has it and legally owns it, but they also care about it. The ways that you can do that is by posting up some of those signs that I talked about earlier. Let people know that this isn't the way that it used to be. Post some of those signs, let people know to stay off of your raw land. You also need to take care of any garbage or trash that might be there as well. I don't want to go too deep into it, but Google the broken windows theory. Essentially, when people see that something is already in decay, they are normally more likely to act bad around it. So if your raw land already has a bunch of old beer bottles and beer cans and people know that the kids are throwing parties in the grass, you know, in the middle of the night out there, well, you have to kind of nip that right in the bud. You need to show people that the land is taken care of and someone does care about it. The number one way to do this is, again, post some of those signs and you're going to have to do some of that yard work. You can't just buy it and forget it. You're going to have to take care of it one way or another. Even just a simple brush hog once a year is going to really keep things in line. See, there I go again, talking that jargon. For city folk that don't know what brush hogging is, I'm just going to say it's essentially a tool that is used to take care of really overgrown pieces of grass and earth. It'll really just knock everything down. Actually, brush hogging is a great example. To do that, you could either do it yourself or pay a specialist. If you want to do it yourself, you can go to your local Home Depot or big box store and you can rent a brush hogger from them. Now doing that won't be too expensive, but it's not easy. It's bone breaking work to brush hog three acres of land. Or you could choose to spend a lot of money and get somebody else to come in and do it for you. I actually did that. I got some guy, 
I mean, he just had the biggest truck in the world. He just looked like he 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 knew what he was doing when it comes to brush hawking is all I'm going to say without typecasting, right? So he came in, he knocked it all down. He did an amazing job. He also told me, hey, I'm never doing this again. And the reason being is, is my land was in such bad shape he didn't even know where he was going. So there was a couple times where he fell into the small stream that passes through my land. And I didn't even know those things were there because the land was so kind of overrun and overgrown. I knew there was water on my land, but I didn't know where and how it flowed until we brush hogged it and I could see everything. So that's a perfect example. You either need to do it yourself and it's bone breaking work or it's really expensive. Another thing going back to that third point is we found a lot of beer cans. A lot of people were partying on my land and I had to show them that we're not doing that anymore. Moving on to the next tip. Landowners get treated like second rate citizens. Now, I'm not trying to do any woke BS or any whatever the hell. But what I'm talking about is when you go through the town, when people are voting on things, when if you want to get kind of active uh, with the local community and kind of make your voice be heard as someone who owns property in the community, because if you own land, you own property in that community, just know that people might try to bully you around for two reasons. You're the newest person on the block. And also, you don't even have a house here. You don't live here. Well, I'm sorry, Seymour, but I do. All right. I own land here. My vote counts just as much as everyone else's. So I just want to give you guys a little heads up. They're already going to be looking at you like your city folk. They're not going to be treating you the best. But also, you need to kind of come in there, puff your chest out a bit and make sure they know and, and not the rude city thing that we all do. What I am talking about, though, is making sure that your presence is known, your presence is respected as you communicate with people. There is no need for you to allow them to kind of, you know, treat you like a second rate citizen. And once you kind of remind them that like, hey, you know, yeah, I hear you. I do, you know, not live here full time, but you know, I own land and I care about the betterment of this community. I care about where it's going, just like everyone else. That is a very soft and polite and delicate way of kind of firmly letting them know, hey, you know, it's not going to be that type of party. Did I miss anything? Or for the city folk out there, do you have any questions about owning land that I didn't get to? And also, if you don't own land already and you're looking at how to do it, check out this video. It's got like 100,000 million views on it. It actually has like a good amount of views on it. And it'll teach you just the honest way of actually buying land. So check those out. Thanks for watching. Peace.